everyone, and we go on our educational video series. During our previous video, we've introduced a diagram of how to create an IFC file with a minimum set of necessary data. By the end of today's video, we'll have a demo project that implements creation of an IFC file according to that diagram. As a short reminder, that is the diagram. First, we create services object, then we perform initialization, Next, create a database. After this, populate the database with the four necessary entities. Next, save the database to an IFC file. And after this, perform an initialization. But at the first step, let us have a look at what we get if we save the database to a file just after the creation. So let us switch to the code. For our today's demo, we will use our DAM, for example, demo as a base. Please switch to link input and check that you have the TD examples com. No other changes in the project settings are required and no additional include directives are required in the code. Now let's switch to the code of the application and we can remove everything. Now, let us move on with the changes. First, we introduce a return value for our demo example. Next, we append the database creation step. And after this, we append saving the database to an IFC file. Let's also check and output the result of the writing database to a file. Next, let us build the application. And after it is successfully built, let us start it. As you see, the application reports about a successful file creation. Now open the IFC file. And as you see, we've got what we expected to see there the high-level structure with header and data sections. Header section includes three items, file description, file name, and file schema. And those items even have already filled attributes. So everything works as expected, that's okay. Now, let us move to the next step and populate the data section with the four items we mentioned before. Those items are IFC unit assignment, IFC Cartesian point, IFC direction, and IFC access to placement 3D. Next, to be able to append the necessary data, we need to access the model object. The model should be accessed with the read write privileges. Next, unit assignment. To be able to append the unit assignment, we need to append units first. Actually, in the model, there may be multiple, and there should be multiple units. But for our demo example, we will use only one, the length. Next, let us append the unit attributes, type, prefix, and name. Actually, there should be more attributes, but for our demo purposes, we'll use these ones only. After the attributes are added, let's append the unit entity to the model. Next, create an array of IDs and append the ID of our unit entity to this array. Create a unit assignment entity and set the created array to this unit assignment entity and append the unit assignment entity to the model. Next, we need to append the Cartesian point. To do so, we create an array of doubles. The array contains three elements and all the three elements are zero values. We create the Cartesian point entity and set this array as the coordinates attribute of the Cartesian point entity. After this, we are able to append the Cartesian point entity to the model. Next step, IFC direction. To append this, first we modify our doubles array 
and change one value to, from 0 to 1. After this, we create the IFC direction entity and set our modified array as an attribute of this entity. After this, we are able to append the IFC direction entity to the model. And the last item, access to placement 3D entity. We create access to placement entity and set Cartesian point as the location attribute of the access to placement 3D entity. After this, we are able to append the entity to the model. Now, let us build our demo application. And after it is successfully built, let us run it. As you see, the application reported about the successful file creation. Now let us open the newly created IFC file in Notepad. As you see, the header section has no changes, while the data section has new additional entities. And what's more important, those records in the data section are interconnected. Unit assignment references the unit record, and access to placement 3D record references the Cartesian point. Everything worked as expected. OK, that is it for today. In the next video, we'll demonstrate how to append some visible element to our model. And for now that's all. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.